So did the hummingbirds leave? Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. And yes, I'm in the food court for the hummingbirds. I'm gonna do an update on them. They're gone. Oh, he looked at me like, what? They're gone? Well, let's put it this way. Let's talk about what really happened because they're not really gone. We were going through 10 gallons a day. Why? We had weather of 40 degrees at night. During the day, we were like 50. The flowers were blooming, but it was raining so many days that they don't want to be out in the rain just like us. So if they can find someplace safer and better, then they were coming here and boy, were they loading up big time. Now, for the past couple days, we're in the mid 50s, about 53 degrees at night which is a really good temperature. I'm still waiting for 60 to start gardening. And that during the day, yes, little guy, we are about 70 and today they're predicting possibly 82 degrees and that is what is changing. There's so many things blooming. Orange trees, grapefruit trees, lemon trees, and then we've got some on the hillside, the wildflowers, but not that many. Let's talk about that. And then I'll talk about a little bit what brought the hummingbirds. Was it flowers? What do you think brought it? We'll talk about that in a second. So anyways, Gary took a ride the other day. He had some deliveries to do. And he went through the area where we have super blooms. There was no super bloom. There was nothing to see except tall grass. Now why? Because we had so much rain with the wrong conditions, like microclimates and climate I talked about all the time with gardening, it wasn't perfect for the flowers. Though there was a lot of flowers, last month I heard there was some, but we're supposed to be still in the peak until the end of April. He didn't see any flowers in that area where they had poppies and all kinds of beautiful wildflowers that grow in Southern California. What he saw was all the tall grass. And because the conditions were too cool at night and not warm enough during the day, the wild grasses that are not all native introduced, invasive grass took over, I'm calling it grass, but they're type, different types of plants, and overpowered all the flowers growing. So there was no super bloom because the flowers need to come up and open up for the pollinators and everybody, all the birds and things that come to it. But what happened was the grasses took over first, all these various types of grasses, getting as tall as five feet tall and it shaded out all the flowers and the flowers didn't get to do their thing that really a super bloom is unique it doesn't happen every year so this year i'm going to say we didn't have a super bloom and that's why the birds didn't leave in fact more came in and that's fine and we're going to have more even though they're not eating as much so i was going through up to 10 gallons a day and now we've backed down still a lot See, the other night alone, I put out three gallons, but that was only in the evening, not counting the gallons that went out during the day. So I'm gonna say it, we're going about, and it changes, you know, with the temperature, I should say it changes, and the weather. We're going through about four to five gallons a day, and that to me is still high normal, but that is still good. That means they're foraging. They're going out and they're finding plenty of food. You all worry, oh my goodness, you're gonna feed them and spoil them and they're not gonna go out. No, 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 they wanna go out. They're only getting nectar from me, and they can't just survive on nectar, though it can keep them alive for quite a long time. They need pollen and they need insects, because the insects give them calcium, because the insects have little vertebrates in there, and that feeds them what they need as far as different nutrients and minerals. So they're getting a lot as far as insects and pollen. So the nectar is what they're getting out of flowers. And then if there's so many birds congregated in one area due to climate, you know, they can't find enough to eat due to the rain. That's when they come in here to forage because if they eat out of a flower and they suck everything out, how long does it take till this flower rejuvenates more nectar? It could be hours, it could be never. So all flowers are different. Here is pollen. You brush up, you get yellow pollen. Once they eat the pollen, the flower's done. It's not going to put out any more pollen. And that's what they're coming here to fill up so they can get what they can't find to survive. Because remember, these are not like other birds that could just hunker down in a tree if they don't feel good, sleep the night away, and get up in the morning and forage again. These birds have to eat because of their metabolism and the way their heart rate is. If they don't feed every 15 minutes, they could die. And that's why 
this to me is so important to them. So I think they're doing great. I believe now they've got nests everywhere. So whatever I have here is going to triple quickly, probably in about a month. We'll be talking about all the babies. And they're just so cute. They come around and they look at all the different things because the parents bring them here and they check out what they should feed on, whether it's salvias, whether it's containers that have food in it. And they teach them all kinds of things, just like the Orioles. The Orioles do the same thing. They bring their babies here. So we're going to have a whole lot going on, I would say, in about six weeks because it takes about two weeks for Orioles to build a nest. It only takes a day or two for a hummingbird to build a nest. But they have to weave it all and everything. And then until they sit, until they hatch, until they leave, they're a little slower than hummingbirds that can build a nest in a matter of a day, the female. And she has no help where the Orioles, the male and female, build together because they come here all the time to take nectar too. That's why I'm talking about them. Well, the female on the hummingbird, she does everything herself. All he does is breed with her. He's gone. Babies never know dad. She builds a nest. She incubates and she feeds them and then she brings them out to forage. She does it all. Let's talk about formula real quick. You want to make formula? No dye. They don't need it. It's not good for them. It's only for you for looks, so don't put it in. They can see the feeder and they test the feeder whether you had dye in it or not. It's a quarter of a cup of white granulated sugar and one cup of water. And there's all different videos I've got on how to make it because you can add half very warm water and as soon as you melt the sugar, add the rest of it. So a half a cup of hot water, then a half a cup of cool water. And then if it's still too warm, let it sit for a little bit before you put it out. You can store anything extra in the fridge. Now, did they come because of the flowers that I have here? Why do I have thousands of hummingbirds? It was the feeders, because when I first started, we had one hummingbird hanging around. I put one feeder out. I had no flowers. We have very few wildflowers around here. We do have citrus trees, but back then, they, they weren't doing as good as they're doing now. And they came for the nectar because that was important for them to come find because they couldn't find enough out when they were foraging. So they found the feeder and then it went from one feeder which was on the window with the nest, and then there was two feeders, and now I've got dozens and dozens of feeders all over. Because here is what I don't like. If I check them at night, which is the biggest time for them to feed, because in the morning, they slowly come in as they wake up, depending on where they're perched, and the sun starts to beat on them, or the air starts to change and warm up, they'll wake up at different times. And it could take them an hour or longer to wake up because they go in a torpid state. So they slowly all come in. So it will be sporadic in the morning. But at night, everybody's been out foraging. Everybody comes in at night. And they're all over all the feeders I have around here, including in the garden. If I walk around in the evening before the sun goes down and I check these feeders, and if there's seats on each feeder, a couple seats that are empty waiting because they're all peaceful and happy here, then I don't worry about it. But when I start seeing them fill up and I see hummingbirds hovering around, frantically looking, another feeder or two comes out somewhere around here. Because I don't want anybody to have to go to sleep on an empty stomach that's not full. So I hope I've given you some thoughts. It isn't the flowers that brought them in, though it helps. Plus, I actually like having the flowers here. So we are adding in more flowers. But it is the feeders, something they recognize. They recognize these feeders the best. They know them and the ones from the dollar stores. They know those too. And when they see them up in the sky, they have wonderful eyesight. They dive bomb to come down to make sure there's food. If you've got them hanging out there empty, they'll come, they'll check. And if they're empty, they leave. And they will remember that. I remember that feeder. It was empty. So try to keep a little bit of food in there at all times. Leave it for three days. After about three days, take it out, wash it, and refill it. And you don't have to fill it, just put a little bit. Because remember, they're smart and they know who's got the food. And that's what brought them in. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. And do me a favor, put your questions and comments underneath as what you want to see from me. Do you want to see more on feeders? Do you want to see more on formulas? Do you want to see more setups that I'm doing on hummingbirds? Do you want to see more bird bass? Because I'm going to be building a whole bunch of bird bass this year, all different types. Ones that may be tricky, but ones that are so easy that any of us can do. And it's not the tricky ones or the ones that are difficult to make that are, they're attracted to. Sometimes it's the easiest ones. But let me know so I know which direction to go in 
and give you ideas and thoughts so you can take some of these hummingbirds off my hands and they will come to you. But of course, you have different hummingbirds throughout the United States. These are here in Southern California. So I'm gonna read those comments, so be sure to put those in there. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Oh, and what type of feeders to make.